Okay, here is uh, topic 2.1. We've already had one or two lessons on this topic, but uh, I wanted to talk specifically today about motion in two dimensions. So let's take a look. First, your learning objectives here. We only really have one, and that is to analyze projectile motion, including the resolution of vertical and horizontal components of acceleration, velocity, and displacement. We're mostly going to focus uh, in this particular lesson on velocity, but based on what you know about acceleration, velocity, and displacement from uh, previous lessons, you should be able to extrapolate what is happening there. Okay, so on the next slide, we're going to look at the path of a projectile and the x-axis of this uh, graph will show you the horizontal position uh, rather than time. Okay, so here's what it looks like. So you can see here uh, on the y-axis, we have vertical position. On the x-axis, we have horizontal position. I'm not showing any numbers here. Uh, we would assume, given that this is position, that uh, what we're looking at then is distance. So uh, if we had to assign a, uh, a unit, it would be meters, of course. Okay, note that we have also defined here initial velocity as well as final velocity, which are shown here and here, respectively. And we have a few intermediate velocities, including what I've called v sub one here, and v sub two, and v sub three. We will come back to this slide. So, some key points. Uh, for this particular uh, graph, we're assuming zero air resistance, so keep that in mind. Note that velocity is tangential to the parabola traced by the position of the object in two dimensions. Okay, so what we have here is a tangent line, and uh, if we had time on the x-axis, that would also be true. we are resolving our velocity vectors here into both vertical and horizontal components, okay? Um, so they're shown at various points as v sub y and v sub x, uh, but there are a few key points here. In fact, uh, you never see v sub x, and the reason for that um, will be explained momentarily. The horizontal component of velocity is going to be constant across the path of our parabola. And then this is a bit weird. This is one of those things that really throws students. So uh, some key points about velocity are as follows. First, at the apex of the parabola, vertical velocity, the vertical uh, component, is going to be equal to zero just for an instant, for a tiny, tiny, tiny slice of time. And uh, if we we're looking for kind of a TOK question here, uh, one of the big questions in physics is, is time quantized? Uh, in other words, is there a smallest possible amount of time? Um, it's an interesting question. It's a little off topic, so we won't get into it. But these are the kinds of questions that you should ask. OK, um, so key point. At a given height, our velocity is going to have a specific magnitude, and it doesn't really matter if it's going up or down. And we will look at the math uh, a little bit further in topic 2.3, um, specifically relating it to kinetic energy. But for right now, you just need to know that um, if the object is going up, the magnitude of velocity at a given magnitude of velocity at a, at a given height is going to be the same, whether it's going up or down. Okay, I've said that twice then. All right, uh, the implication of this fact is that the magnitude of final velocity is going to be equal to the magnitude of the initial velocity. And that does assume that the vertical position is uh, equivalent. And normally this would be zero. You would imagine though that this is not the case if we are launching our projectile uh, off of a cliff, and that's a pretty common scenario in IB physics. So this is only the case when you're on a, a like a flat 
uh, field or something. Okay, uh, so initial and final velocities, let's take a little closer look here. We have previously defined u as initial velocity and we have defined v as final velocity. Uh, this is the case in your data booklet and you should make a note, uh, you should define your variables whenever possible in your data booklet. Uh, I recommend annotating your data booklet as I've told you in class already. All right, so note here that the angle of final velocity is going to be equal to the negative angle of initial velocity. So uh, I've defined that angle here as alpha and for our initial velocity. And for our final velocity, it will just be negative alpha. Remember, we always measure the angle of a vector off of the horizontal pointed to the right. Okay. Um, Another key point about initial and final velocities, the vertical component of final velocity is equal to the, um, I'm sorry, that should be negative component of initial velocity, not angle. I will have to fix that. Actually, I'm just going to do it now. There you go. It never happened. Oops. Yes, we will pretend that did not happen. Okay, so the vertical component of final velocity is equal to the negative component of initial velocity. So what that means is that uh, V sub Y is going to be equal to negative U sub Y. The horizontal component, again, is the same, okay? So uh, if our object is at the same height, and I hope I have very thoroughly nailed this down. Uh, the same is going to be true for v sub one and v sub three. So if we imagine that my object here is at a height of say, I don't know, h, and over here it is also at a height of say, h, then this angle and this angle will effectively be equal each other equal to each other, although if we're measuring off the horizontal, uh, v sub three will have the negative angle of v sub one. And note that uh, v sub y here will have the same magnitude as this v sub y, but the direction is uh, in the opposite direction. Okay, one dimensional analysis. What are we dealing with here? So we've been looking at um, a chart showing the motion of an object through two dimensions. Consider the vertical component of velocity of our object as it's flying through the air over time uh, instead of horizontal position. So what would that graph look like? Okay, so you replace horizontal position here with time and we're just graphing the vertical position of the object uh, as it moves through time. So what does that look like? Uh, you could pause the video here if you wanted to. I will tell you momentarily, but you could pause the video here. Okay, I'm assuming that uh, you thought it over. And the answer is this. It's going to look very much like this graph except we'll have time on the x-axis, okay? That's it. Um, the amount of time will be given by the mathematics uh, in your data booklet, but in terms of the visual look of the graph, it's going to be a parabola pointed downward, okay? So a negative parabola. What about the horizontal component of velocity? Let's think about that. What is that going to look like? I will pause very briefly. Okay, I have paused the video and, or you have paused the video. I just stopped talking for a second. Uh, what about the horizontal component? What does it look like? Well, uh, again, assuming zero air resistance, uh, the chart of the horizontal component over time is just going to be a horizontal line. Uh, it's going to be constant, right? So. This is one of the reasons why we go in for one dimensional analysis. It's not particularly useful to look at the horizontal component if it's constant all the way through. 
and it is where we assume zero air resistance. Okay, um, we only pay attention then to the dimension that is experiencing acceleration. Uh, and that simplifies our model a lot. So uh, more often than not, we're going to be looking at the vertical component, um, particularly when we're talking about gravitational acceleration. So on that note, uh, let's think about what the path of our object is going to look like. Um, remember, it's moving through time and space as a parabola. I want you to think about what that graph would look like with air resistance. Uh, you could even put together a little hypothesis. And while you're thinking about it, we are going to start answering that question with AlgoDo, uh, which is a fun piece of free software that you should now have installed based on my instructions in our previous classes. So I'm going to stop the video now and we will come back to air resistance momentarily. Okay, as usual, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, Google chat is a good way to do that. You can uh, ask me the question and sometimes your classmates will respond correctly, thereby saving me time, which is nice. Um, if they don't, then of course I will. So anyway, please have a great day. Do not click like and definitely do not subscribe. Have a great day.